why I believe Kamala Harris will be the next president. Mr. Reagan. Be sure to buy all of my Donald Trump fight merch. I feel like the assassination attempt against Donald Trump has already been forgotten by most of America. Let's keep this image in the American consciousness. Buy a fight mug or a fight t-shirt today, or buy both. Remind everyone that Donald Trump is truly an American hero. And help me in my mission to save America. Now, I'm going to say something that you probably don't want to hear and that you certainly won't like hearing, but I think it's true, so I'm going to say it. Kamala Harris is running a great campaign. Or should I say, the brains behind Kamala Harris is running a great campaign. Certainly, Kamala was always poised to get a huge bump at first because people were naturally going to be relieved that Joe Biden finally bowed out. So no matter who jumped in there, there was always going to be, uh, you know, a sort of a flash of enthusiasm from leftist voters. But this enthusiasm is temporary. And so this is not why I predict that Kamala Harris will be the next president. I don't think that they can sustain this energy uh, if they stick with their current strategy. And so I think they will have to change things up. Therefore, I am predicting an October surprise. And this October surprise, this political gimmick, will be the reason that Kamala Harris becomes the next president of the United States of America. I will explain all of this in one moment. First, of course, I have to sell you something. Do you ever wonder what happened to the legend Chuck Norris? I recently saw a video that he made and I was shocked. He's in his 80s and he's still kicking butt and working out and staying active. What's even more shocking is that he's stronger, he can work out longer, and he has plenty of energy left over for his grandkids. He did this by just making one change. He says that he still feels like he's in his 50s. His wife even started doing this one thing too and she's never felt better. She says she feels 10 years younger and her body looks leaner and she has energy all day. Chuck made a special video that explains everything, so make sure you watch it by going to chuckdefense.com slash Reagan, or by clicking the link in the description below. It'll change the way you think about your health. Once again, that's chuckdefense.com slash Reagan, and click on the link in the description below and watch the video right now. You won't believe how simple it is. Just remember, the legendary Chuck Norris is a whopping 84 years old, and yet has more energy than I do. He discovered he could create dramatic changes to his health, simply focusing on three things that sabotage our body as we age. Watch this method by clicking on the link in the description box below. It's chuckdefense.com slash Reagan. So I think Kamala Harris's handlers are doing a great job. Consider the fact that they have the worst candidate for president probably in the history of the country. And they are up against one of the most successful presidents in history and a man who just recently survived an assassination attempt and became an American legend. And look, the years of lies about Donald Trump have certainly made some people hate him, but that's not really enough for Kamala to win. Her team needs to get people excited to vote for her, and they need to maintain that excitement through to the election. And of course, the mainstream media has done everything in their power to try to convince America that Kamala Harris is magnificent. But the primary strategy that Kamala's handlers seem to have taken since that initial boost provided by that relief about Joe Biden, what they've done is a kind of Hail Mary strategy. And the thing is, this strategy seems to have worked a lot better than I think even the political strategists could have ever possibly imagined. And honestly, I think that's a little bit of a testament to how gullible Democrat voters are. This Hail Mary strategy has been, you know, bread and circuses. Put on a great show, offer zero substance, dazzle the crowds with the illusion that Kamala is fantastic, but provide nothing real or significant that could be analyzed or criticized. Think about this. All of Kamala's campaign rallies are actually musical concerts where at some point during the concert, Kamala gets up and she speaks. Now this massively inflates the number of people going to these events. It creates the illusion that Kamala can draw huge crowds, just like Trump. Kamala has provided almost no policy prescriptions at all. And of the few that she has presented, two of them were stolen 
from Trump. Did you see the thing where Trump came out and said that he was going to uh, stop taxes for tips yeah. of hospitality workers and yeah. you, you wouldn't tax them on tips anymore? Yeah, that was like a month and a half ago. Yeah, and then she came out yeah. and said she's going to do it. Right. And she's going to stop tips. As and everybody if, cheered as yeah. if it was her idea. But here's the problem. In 2022, she was one of the deciding votes oh, the to tie go burger. after people yeah. that were not reporting their tips. Right. She was the she was the uh, tiebreaker. Yeah, exactly. The so exactly. they're going to tax the business it, instead, which in turn taxes the the workers that yeah. are there. But it's hilarious that two years later she's acting like this is her idea now. Yeah. Like, you had a chance. You could have you swung it the other way two years ago. Kamala has even pivoted on several key political issues in order to pretend that she's a moderate. The other day, Brian Stelter actually explained what this campaign is really all about. I think Trump world's jealous of the joy right now. There's so much yes. anger coming from Trump's speeches. Joy is real and it's important. People can make fun of it and say focus yes. on the policy. But if you ask political scientists and psychology professors, they'll tell you the emotions matter in politics. Yes. Sometimes they matter a lot more than the policies. And that's, I think, the big story this week. Now, what Brian Stelter is saying here, it sounds kind of silly. It sounds like nonsense, but he's actually right. And look, what he's saying here is actually kind of a shocking admission. Let me explain. The reason he's right is because he's talking about Democrat voters. Left-wing politicians, Democrats, they have always relied on emotional manipulation over reason, over logic, and over truth. This has been their primary strategy since I was a little kid. On the immigration issue, they always tell the story about the poor, hardworking, illegal immigrant mother who just wants to feed her family. On abortion, they always insist that without legalized abortion on demand services at any stage of the pregnancy, then 13-year-old girls all over the country are going to abort their babies themselves using rusty coat hangers in back alleys, and they're gonna give themselves a nasty infection and die. On race, they pretend that black Americans are at such a severe disadvantage on a systemic level that they can work twice as hard as a white man. They can be twice as smart. They can be twice as skilled. They can be better than white people at everything, and they still might never succeed over their inferior white colleagues. And they also claim that racist white police officers are murdering unarmed black men all over the country in massive numbers each and every day. And of course, they've established a horror story around climate change, where just about everything bad that happens can be traced back to climate change, and that climate change is exclusively caused by CO2 in the atmosphere that has been produced through human activity. And if we do not take drastic action, the world will end in 12 years. The world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. On the LGBTQ XYZ issue, they always say that gay men are ruthlessly bullied, and so they're terrified of coming out of the closet because they will be ostracized by society. And they also insist that transgender kids will all jump off a cliff if we don't use their preferred pronouns. And all of these stories are ridiculous, of course, but Democrat voters really buy into this stuff. And that is the primary reason that so many Americans vote Democrat. They have been emotionally manipulated. And what is emotional manipulation when it comes to politics? Well, there is a very well-known term for this. It is called propaganda. And so what Brian Stelter is saying here is that leftist propaganda is working. And that's why I said that what he's expressed here is a shocking admission. Because the left usually hides the fact that what they're presenting to the public is propaganda. But here, Brian Stelter has, I think, inadvertently let the cat out of the bag. He has said the quiet part out loud. He said that emotion is sometimes more important than the policies. And this is what the left really believes. They try to emotionally manipulate voters so that they don't think too much about the policies because their policies suck. And Kamala doesn't even have policies, but that's okay. The emotional manipulation, the lies, and the big circus that they're putting on, the spectacle that they're presenting to the people, this is their tactic to try to create the illusion that Kamala is fantastic. But this will not last forever. Like most trendy things, people will move on from this. And when they do move on from this, the Kamala campaign will need to do something to keep her popularity up. And they have a huge problem then, because traditionally, what a candidate would do after the initial momentum slows is they present a vision for America. They point to their record, and they point to their policy prescriptions, and they explain why they would be the best person for the job. But Kamala can't do that. She has some fatal flaws that make this standard tactic 
impossible for her. First of all, her record is terrible. She's got the most hard left radical record of anyone in political office. The Biden-Harris administration caused significant inflation, and then they brought in millions of illegal aliens, which appears to have been done intentionally. And I think even if you put aside all of her other enormous blunders, these two problems alone should sink her candidacy. But beyond her record, she's actually terrible at speaking off the cuff. She talks to people as if they're infants. So Ukraine is a country in Europe. It exists next to another country called Russia. Russia is a bigger country. Russia is a powerful country. Russia decided to invade a smaller country called Ukraine. So basically that's wrong. She speaks in word salads. I think it's very important for us at every moment in time, and certainly this one, to see the moment in time in which we exist and are present, to understand where we exist in the history and in the moment as it relates not only to the past, but the future. She laughs off serious questions. And is that a socialist or progressive perspective? <laughs> no. <laughs> And she is incredibly phony. And this is best illustrated, of course, by when she tries to sound black. You know, the one thing about all of us is we like hard work. Hard work is good work. Hard work is good work. The thing that we like about hard work is we have fun doing hard work. She just doesn't have the kind of natural charisma or authenticity that Trump has. And this will be exposed if she ever tries the usual campaign tactics. And so what can they do? Two words, October surprise. An October surprise is an unexpected event that affects a presidential race in October right before the election. An October surprise can be a totally random thing or it can be intentional. A campaign can do something so radical that it completely changes the trajectory of the race. And I think that is what the Democrats will do. And this is why I believe Kamala will be the next president. You see, people forget that Kamala Harris is right now the vice president. She doesn't actually have to beat Trump to become the next president. She just needs Joe Biden to step down. And that, I believe, is exactly what's going to happen. I believe that sometime in October, probably in the second or third week, Joe Biden will step down. This will accomplish a number of things, but the primary thing it'll do is it'll put a massive spotlight on Kamala Harris. She will be a star. The mainstream media already showers her with praise and they repeat the absurd narrative that everything about Kamala Harris is amazing and perfect. But people won't just buy that adulation forever without some substance behind it. And eventually Trump's team will capitalize on this and they will bring the spotlight back to Trump and they will expose Kamala as a fraud. This will be especially true after the first debate. After the debate, Kamala will lose a lot of her momentum and the enthusiasm for her campaign will dip. So how do you shift the media attention away from Trump and back onto Kamala? You make her president. Biden steps down, and then Kamala becomes the first female president in the history of the country. She wasn't elected to that position, but that doesn't matter. She's just made history. She's the first woman president of the United States of America. You could not find a woman less worthy of this position, and yet... This, I believe, is what the Democrats plan to do. And why am I so convinced that they'll do this? Because it's too good of an idea. It would be foolish not to do it. A friend of mine called me the other day, a former Democrat who has turned into a Trump supporter, and he was worried about the new excitement over Kamala. And I explained this whole idea I have to him, and his response was, well, he freaked out. He said, Chris, that is brilliant. That is so brilliant, actually that they have to do it. And he's exactly right. And for those of us who care about this country, this is a tragedy. The next president should be a person who deserves the position. They should be someone who cares about this country and who has the qualities necessary to improve this nation. Kamala cares about Kamala. That is all. The only quality that she has is ambition. And if she's elected to the presidency, this country will crumble. But the Democrats will not wait for the election. They will be handing her the presidency in October. And so we will be seeing a Kamala Harris presidency for at least two full months before the inauguration in February. 
So I do not believe that Trump will be 45 and 47. I believe that he will be 45 and 48. And look, I may be wrong about this. I, I hope and I pray that I'm wrong. I hope and I pray that Donald Trump will be 45 and 47. But I fear that I'm right. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. And remember to go buy all of my Donald Trump fight merch. I feel, again, like the assassination attempt of Donald Trump, it has already been forgotten by most of America. So let's keep this image in the American consciousness. Go buy a fight mug or a fight t-shirt today, or buy both, and remind everyone that Trump is truly an American hero. And help me on my mission to save America. All right, well, that's it for me. And remember, it's not that liberal friends are ignorant. It's just they know so much that is not so. Good night. We're at war with the most dangerous enemy that has ever faced mankind in his long climb from the swamp to the stars. And it's been said if we lose that war and in so doing lose this way of freedom of ours, history will record with the greatest astonishment that those who had the most to lose did the least to prevent its happening. If we lose freedom here, there's no place to escape to. This is the last stand on earth.